What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. And, uh, of course, before we begin, we'd like to say thank you to everyone who has liked, subscribed, and and shared the, the, the show to your friends and family. Uh, it, it costs you nothing to hit that like, but it's certainly valuable to us. Uh, Brian, how you doing? We live in a society... <laughs> Where one division is the number one show in the world. Disney <laughs> Plus has almost a hundred million subscribers. Exactly. Is almost a reality. Isn't that right, Pablo? <laughs> <laughs> oh, exactly. One division is number one. That's all I gotta say. MCU is doing their thing. Over the weekend, we got the Zack Snyder trailer. This is supposed to be like the final trailer before we get the actual sh- uh, movie, correct? Yeah. And I'll give you my thoughts. First, we'll talk about that. Then we'll get into WandaVision uh, episode six. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the Gino Carano situation and, and, and the show and what will happen to the show. Nothing much, I think, anyway. And then we'll talk a little bit about Shang-Chi. Um. What I thought about the Zack Snyder trailer was when I saw it, I woke up and I and I, I tend to go through my phone and just see what's going on. And I saw the trailer. And I have to say that I was very impressed with Dark Side. Not gonna front Dark Side looked awesome. Outside of that, there was nothing else new other than the Joker in that dream sequence where I guess he's just talking to Batman and having that conversation. I I read read an article where Zack Snyder spoke to Variety magazine and he he just stated uh, something to the effect that he needed to put in uh, the Joker and and Batman in the scene. And he felt like DC deserved that, that interaction and the most memorable interaction between Batman and Joker came from me in the Dark Knight, right? In the you know in the police precinct. That was, that was for me what was a great scene. This scene with Jared Leto coming back as a Joker didn't do anything for me. Outside of Dark Side, it was just a little bit more the same. Yeah, we get the black suit. Yay, whatever. Steppenwolf looks different. There was nothing new that got me excited. I'm, I, I definitely do want to see the four hour movie. And for those of you who tend to sit through the whole four hour film, make sure you got an empty bottle in case you need to go and you just want to sit through it. But again, I don't see what all the hype is about for it. I'm just looking forward to seeing what's new about it and how different this movie will be. What were your thoughts when you saw the trailer? Pretty similar. My favorite shot of the trailer, the one that, you know, got me, at least I was just excited to see, was the shot of Darkseid walking down in and out of what looked like Apocalypse. Um, yeah. That I thought was very cool, very exciting. And, you know, the fact that there seemed to be an exchange between him and Steppenwolf. Um, yeah, like I thought that was really neat. You know, I think to say like, okay, maybe we'll get to see the world fleshed out a little bit. Um, the visuals, of course, look great. I mean, Zach is one of the best visual artists we have. Um, you know, his, his talent is undeniable. I thought the other thing I, I liked and maybe I hope we get more of is more Jeremy Irons um, as Alfred. I thought he was featured in the trailer with an important quote. And I feel like we've seen clips of him that never made it to the theatrical, like a couple of occasions, like interacting with Superman. And so I'm hopeful, like, you know, he's a great actor. Hopefully we get a little bit more of that character as well. My biggest complaint is the visual style of the action is still just too busy. For me, it just, you know, I, this is a film, and Zach's not the only one guilty of this. I think this goes all the way back to when CGI became really mainstream in movies like Gladiator and the Two Towers did these epic battle scenes where they showed you so much going on at once. And ever since then, it feels like filmmakers have wanted to do these type of scenes. And 
I just feel like in a movie like this, it misses the point of you want to center it on the heroes who are a select few and on the bad guy who is one, maybe two in this case, depending on what dark side role the two is. And all that other stuff with the parademons is just love, quite honestly. Like we know the good guys are going to waste those guys in the end. It doesn't matter what the odds are. So, yeah. And I feel like, you know, like in Avengers, they straddle that balance because they gave us the giant battle scene. But they gave us before that the real scene, which was the three OGs against Thanos with nobody else around. And that, yeah. for my money, is far more enjoyable to watch than yeah. the mega scene. Yeah, that of comes course. After. Definitely. Definitely. And so at that point, I feel like in this, I kept waiting for like, when I see one exchange where it's just a couple of the heroes against Steppenwolf or against Steppenwolf and Darkseid or against Darkseid, I didn't get that. It felt like it was more kind of cool shots of them and a huge problem of stuff going on. And that just, that approach just doesn't do it for me. And so that's what my biggest concern is that I just don't see the editing here. I see like, Flashes of greatness inside of something that I still think is is, is going to be a little bit confusing to watch. And the second thing is, we're not any further along in terms of story than we were, right? All of these shots were visually oriented. We're not really much further along in terms of how this story is different than the one we were on. And so that's just a TBD. We don't know. But it's yeah. just a little bit question. So, yeah. I mean, yes, I agree. The visuals. Zach does great with visuals. You know, I was fooled once with Man of Steel and then we got the story. His problem has always been story. And four hours, you're going to get this whole thing that he wanted to show. Whether it goes anywhere from this is, is still the till TBA. Or well, TBD, actually. Um, and I'm... Again, I'm just looking forward to seeing what, how different this movie will be. Is the story going to get any better? I doubt it. How much more will we see? Yes, we're going to see more Cyborg. Yes, we're going to see more Flash. Yes, we're going to see Martian Manhunter. How much of a role does Darkseid play? Probably not much. The, if you go by what's been said in the past regarding Darkseid and his appearance, I just don't see what more or what else we're going to see that's going to be so fantastic or so great that will say to us, we need to see more. I just don't see it. I mean, with regard to dark side, he's kind of caught in the, the almost impossible challenge of you set up Stephen Wolf as the villain, so you have to make him relevant. Even if he succeeds in that, I mean, look, this is not going to happen, but let's say there was some world where at the two and a half hour mark, they eliminate Stephen Wolf, and now we're basically on to Dark Side coming through the boom tube. Now you're stuck with 90 minutes to make Dark Side. Yeah, yeah. But you can see, like, you can't really do both even in four hours, and so. That's what it feels like. We're bound to be, I feel like, underwhelmed with at least one of the two. And that's tough. Like, knowing who the dark side is one of those two villains, it's tough to feel like there's a pretty good chance he's going to be the one that's more of a candidate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Four, four, four hours is just like... For people who complain, oh, this movie was too long. Four hours? Four hours. I'm gonna sit through it because I'm gonna watch it because this is it for me. This is it. This is what he wanted to show. I'm gonna see it. But I four think it's hours, go by pretty quick. You think? I mean, I, I might get I might get a little impatient seeing the same stuff we've already seen. That's fair. That's fair. But I do think like there's probably enough similar enough stuff that we haven't seen that he'll keep it moving to where four hours will feel like it's moving pretty good. Like. Like it's actually quick cut and so forth. But like I said, it's just, it just seems like a really tough task to, to land the plane 
yeah. relative, like I said, to BVS, like, and sort of to your point, almost erase people's memories of Justice League at the same time. That's a really tall order. So yeah. um, I saw some hopeful stuff. Like I thought, you know, the Ray Fisher scenes we're getting, like we've always said, he's probably going to come off looking good. I think oh, that's going to be dope. Yeah. We're seeing of him look kind of exciting, both action and I guess free, free injury. So yeah, I mean, that's exciting. the other thing, by the way, no humor. I think that's very deliberate. There's not been a single joke or yeah. one line or anything it's, it's dark dark and darker i mean they're <laughs> leaning to that so this trailer was very I mean, yeah, yeah and it's rated r yeah it's rated r so let's see i'm let's see how this is going to turn out i mean we're only a few weeks away and again this is judgment day this is judgment day for everybody who's been wanting to see this now you're going to get to see it four hours of it what jack intended and i'm hoping that we don't see any more uh, to be honest, and it's no disrespect to the DC fans or, or Zach, but I don't see where you can go from here uh, unless you've been shooting something already, which obviously no. Like, where do you go from here? These actors have, are getting older. These, these actors are moving on. These actors are doing other stuff. How do you get something back up to you know, go after this. What story are you going to tell? And, and, and I just don't see it happening. We also got, I think, a little bit of a confirmation with Jared Leto showing up in the nightmare sequence. I think it confirms something that we've surmised, which is that he's not a meaningful part of the whole story. Right? The nightmare, by definition, is sort of this alternate reality vision of the future. It's not the world that we're inhabiting in the actual movie. So we assume that he's presence is really localized to that sequence it's more of a fun one to the fans than it is do you do you think they show or we get some insight as to what he did to robin exactly is implied that that's going to be true so i'm assuming that like there's a seat i mean there were a number of flashback and flash forwards even in bvfs if you remember like ben affleck spends a lot of time in the trance um, up in that movie and so i'm assuming we get the full versions of those very possible we get the the um the, it is dick i think he has said it is dick grayson's suit that's on the wall there um not jason todd's mm -hmm. so i think yeah it's very possible we get a, a some sort of nod or maybe it's dialogue that references what happened yeah well let us know what you think in the comment section below about uh what you thought of the trailer do you think this movie is going to be fantastic, any different than what we already saw? Surely it's going to be different, but how much different and how much better will it be? Surely it's going to be better. But is it going to be that feeling that you saw or you got when you saw Infinity War? And be honest with yourself. Are you going to get that same feeling? Are you going to get that same feeling when you saw Endgame? Are you going to be standing up and, and, and screaming and, and, and feeling elated after seeing this movie? I doubt that very seriously. And if you do, hooray for you. You're probably in a select few of people that felt this or are going to feel this way. But the majority of people are going to just see this four-hour film and be happy for Zach that he showed it. And, and that'll be it, hopefully. And to be clear, I hope I'm one of those people. Like I, I think the odds are long, but I hope I'm one of those people. Like, you know, I mean, I, I hope he's yeah. us. You know, it's like we 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 come from a position of doubt and skepticism because yes. we've struggled with the prior films to varying degrees. But like, I still like I hope I, I would never root for this to turn out poorly. No, like, of course not. Be, it's you know better than I think, and I want to walk out of there and when we do our show and be like. Man, I didn't see that coming. That was awesome. True, yeah. true. Yeah. Uh, but I'm just... It just hasn't happened yet with it, this it, it, universe. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and that's the whole thing. Based on what we've seen in the past, I doubt that we're going to get that same... Or, or get, that, get to that place of excitement and hooray and all this other stuff. I, I, I doubt it, but based on what we've seen in the past, it just doesn't seem likely i hope it does but for me it just doesn't seem like it's going to happen so let us know what you think in the comment section below on to better things 
um, WandaVision, episode six. I have some questions, Brian, as I was thinking and pondering some of the possible things that may happen in the future with regards to mutants. There was a few things said in that episode with regards to possible um to the possible villain behind all of this um there was a few things that darcy said that made me speculate about how mutants come about what were your thoughts about this episode i liked it very much um i'm looking forward to seeing who this aerospace engineer is but go ahead <laughs> yeah, we're rolling along pretty good now. I'll, I'll, I'll let you book more in a minute. I mean, I think, so first off, one is, um, let's stop calling Evan Peters a cameo, because he's not a cameo. If, you, if you're if you a full ride side saddle for an episode after you show up, you're not a cameo. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I found myself, that character I was really focused on, and I was surprised at a couple points in the sense of they did the same sort of flash of him dead that they did with Vision. Mm -hmm. But then he said several things that let you know he was in on what was going on. Like, yes, you know, like your, your dead husband can't die twice. Like, something about that character still is off. Like, it's just not, like, he's neither an image conjured by her, but he's neither the X-Men um, Quicksilver that we had. He's something yeah. else. I can't yeah. quite figure out what that is, but uh, I thought that was that was an interesting element. You're right. The the Darcy thing, like the he has your blood and then he showed like the blood changes. Like there was something about that that seemed very significant. Like they wanted you to focus on that. And then obviously you yeah, had teasing the engineer, which has a lot of people thinking Reed Richards is going to show up in episode seven. I don't which think so. Kind of break the internet. I feel like if that happens. Oh but, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to keep my expectations low. Um, but you know the the other thing I was like, maybe if I had a disappointment or just a question, and maybe we're going to talk about it because the length of the last three episodes might answer it. Um, Captain Han not really being in this episode other than the one scene, which was kind of a significant scene, but really a small part for her. They're kind of running out of time to really reveal a new villain. Because up until now, it's still Wanda's kind of the bad guy or the bad gal in this. And we clearly know she's not in the end, but mm -hmm. um, it's another episode where we didn't really make a lot of progress, although you seem to have a few clues, but we didn't make a ton of tangible progress with getting to that point. But look, I mean, the, the rhythm is good right now. We're, we're moving along inside and outside. Westview's expanding, like, you know, a lot of things in motion and forward progress. So, yeah. you know, three big episodes to go. And, you know, I continue to be impressed too with the, the visuals, the effects, you know, like watching, like when Vision was sort of, I mean, how many times is going to die? How many times is he going to die in the show? <laughs> <laughs> like, this is his contract. Yeah. He has to get wiped out <laughs> every couple of appearances. But but just that whole sequence where they expanded Westview and he was coming apart. I was like, this is feature film level. Oh, yeah. Film and we're just seeing oh, yeah. it on TV. So We can certainly say is either Mephisto or Nightmare. Based on the history with um, Wiccan and, and, and Speed and where they come from, there's that connection to Mephisto. There was a line that uh, Pietro said about nightmares. Her not being, her, at least you're not doing that. You're not creating nightmares for, you know, that's sort of like, hmm, interesting, right? right. Um, so it's either those two. Hopefully in the next episode, which they're supposed to be a lot longer. We'll get some more insight and and finally get some um, confirmation as to who is truly behind it, or at least that much closer, so that the final two episodes, or uh, probably doesn't even end there, probably continues in Doctor Strange two. Darcy, She mentioned something about her blood changing, her DNA changing, correct? Yeah. Now, let's try to formulate some connections here. Wanda was created 
from the Mind Stone, correct? Yeah. It changed her and it helped her become whatever she is now. This all comes from the Infinity Stone. I would bet that we have a gap between Infinity War end game how long of a gap is it four or five years five years okay five on, years. the spider-man confirmed it was far from home is where they said it's five years okay and with the kids in school age five years yeah it's five years okay in infinity war we got the snap we get this energy blast that i guess sort of resonates around the world correct yes. i'm quite certain that that changes people in some way or at least awakens that uh gene for that mutation to occur because the energy field that she's creating has caused um monica to somewhat change as she said and now this this dome that she that Wanda's created is expanding. How big does it get? I don't know. But it looks like it's getting quite big. I would assume also that the people that are inside that field or come across it somehow get affected as well. So we can sort of say, and, and, and again, there, there wasn't just one snap. There was a couple. An Infinity War and Endgame. And I guess this happens at what around the universe, right? It affects everyone. So I, I think there's going to be a lot of content revolving around that five year gap, especially when it comes to mutants. I'm guessing. So do you do you sort of see where I'm going with this? I do. I would actually expand on it and say when I meant about the blood side by side is one is just from the comics we know that mutant there's a bit an emphasis on right blood dna comparisons like that's a big piece of how that's portrayed in the comics and in the show so the fact that they kind of put that screen up for you to look at for a while what i thought was significant number two is we assume that it was westview that did that to her blood because darcy assumed it but we don't Oh, do we know that's the case? Like, given this character's history and the Rambo history with Captain Marvel, I leave open the possibility as well that like something about her blood was conducive to this in a way that is, you know, a little different than the average person. So Darcy portrays it as, well, you've gone through the hex twice. And that's what happens. But I mean, Darcy wouldn't necessarily know if there was any backstory to like her mom or her carrying something, which we know the characters can just a superpower of their own. So, you know, there's also that like little bit of bait and switch maybe. But I agree with you that like, they're clearly teeing up this idea of, you know, I don't know, another, whether it's mutants, but like other things out there that are yet unexplored. And that even goes back to when they showed us in the hospital, right? The first time we saw the snap from the perspective of the people. I think we're gonna keep seeing that. And yeah, yeah, I think we're going to see that in films, TV shows. There's going to be a lot of fallout. Yeah, I agree with you. I think it's a fertile ground to explore and, and an easy way to bring bring mutants about in a way that makes sense. Because otherwise, like you said, you're going to be left with this huge plot hole of like all these heroes and anti heroes around the world who should have been participating in the battles we've already seen and who were nowhere to be found. Correct. So, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure we're going to get a lot more clarity with Eternals. Um, and uh, there being something already in place and the snap being the thing to uh, awaken, awaken that experiment of that time in the Eternals. So let us know what you think in the in the in the, the comment section below about that theory. Um, I, I, I'm really quite enjoying 
um wandavision as re- you guys already know this is the number one show in all right. of the world what's interesting about that when that article came out and that's one service that obviously tracks things the way they do i thought it also confirmed something which I, we were talking about a couple weeks ago which was the show started slow it didn't debut at number one no. i think the estimate was like it was in or like it was somewhere in the 30s and yeah. it's worked its way up to one which goes back to like it is a slow burn and a slow start and i do think like they turned the volume up at of course just about the right time because if they hadn't done it i think they would have lost the people yeah i also congratulate them because you know this is you know it, it's science fiction and it's comic but the mcu is at its core an action franchise there's almost no action in this show and it's working like yes. there was one little fight on the base right yeah. basically yeah, 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 yeah. it has been very like, their use of powers has been very minimal the expansion of westview is probably the biggest thing we've seen um i'm amazed that they've made it through six parts without really a super powered fight scene which is like I figured we're going to get a real payoff in the last three episodes, but it's going to make it mean something because we just haven't seen either of these characters really cut loose. There's substance in in, in this I think show. Cool. I think it's cool they pulled yeah. that off. Because we yeah. know, like in Falcon and Winter Soldier, there's probably going to be a fight in the first three. <laughs> <laughs> Every day, all day. Um, but there's substance in this, and, yeah. and 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 the content is well thought out, and and it leaves people to want to know what's going on because if everybody know what's going on then it's not really as compelling right but now everybody's like yo what's going on what's really going on and to have us glued to every word that said to every scene um that you see to ask a question or to get closer to finding out what is actually going on so uh, they've done a fantastic job with this show and yeah it was a slow burn and people were getting a little bit impatient with the first few episodes but um we were hoping that it would pick up and it did and listen man marvel know what marvel they're fantastic man and anybody to say any different is just a person just wanting to be different and not wanting to go along with what's going on and that's and and that's just great storytelling and Marvel doing his thing. Kevin Feige, Feige's on top, man. He's the man. The uh, the cameo talk also continues to heat up. We had a few more comments narrowing things down, right? So you had Paul Bettany confirmed that it's a guy. Yes. That rules out Captain Marvel. Um, he, he also confirmed it's an actor he always wanted to work with. That I thought was the most biggest clue of all, because that ruled out a lot of people who would have qualified. So basically anyone in the MCU is out because in the existing MCU is out because he as vision came along pretty early in the process. Mm-hmm. But I think some people were saying, you know, maybe we get an Ultron sighting. Wait, he's clearly worked with James Spader because they were in Ultron together. It even ruled that even ruled out Ian McKellen because they shared scenes in Da Vinci Code. Mm-hmm. It's pointing toward Fassbender. That's what I, it seems to be leading us a little bit in that direction because they have not nope. worked together. Their, their age is close enough that like I could see them wanting to work together. And there are references in the episode repeatedly to the parents. It's like, I don't know, like there's at least some smoke there. Maybe it's misdirection smoke, but you know, be. Of the, of the, the ones that are there, he is probably the one that fits the bill the most right now. We'll see. Uh, I've also heard like Toby McGuire, maybe he's done. Nah, nah. If that was it, it don't make no sense to me. Yeah. But, but it was saying, some people were saying uh, H- Hank McCoy. No, oh, interesting. I've heard that. Of him oh, being, being okay. the guy. Um, the Hank, Hank McCoy. Be- no, just Hank McCoy. They don't know who. Oh. Just like Hank a McCoy. A big name actor in the role of Hank McCoy. Yes. Oh, interesting. Okay. All right. Um, well, not necessarily a big name actor, but just the aerospace engineer being Hack McCoy. Who it oh, the is? Aerospace engineer. Okay. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, okay. yes. So who it is? We don't know. Who's playing that character? We don't know. But because I was saying for Bettany to say it's someone he always wanted to work with, that's an A-list act. He's not saying that about a, a no-name for like that's if that's yeah. I don't know. Interesting. Interesting. So. 
Let us know what you guys think about WandaVision. I mean, oh, um, just wanted to mention, could, would you, I think we would say that the 95 new million subscribers to Disney Plus has to do a lot with WandaVision. Would you agree with that? Yeah, no, I think absolutely. I mean, we, we talked about like Disney got as far as it did with basically Mandalorian and a, you know, a few other side shows, the right stuff, some Nat Geo programming. Um, yeah, this, we're, we're just the tip of the iceberg for original programming. And one division was the first of the most profitable enterprise they have, which is Marvel. Yeah. So, yeah, no question that had a lot to do with it. Um, and people realizing also that there's a calendar ahead, you know, so yeah. you know, when, once they saw Soul, I think that was the other big part of it. So the families were seeing Soul go in that route, and now you're seeing Raya and the Last Dragon go the Mulan route. So I think families are realizing, like, hey, this is how we get new kids' movies that we yeah, love yeah. from Disney. So I think those two things combined, I mean, what were those five-year targets again? They're going to hit those in, like, Two years, man. The rate they're going. They were talking about what three hundred or five hundred million subscribers. You know, a third of the way there. I'm just yeah. saying. Well, if you include Disney and Hulu, right there, are like a hundred and thirty-six million households ready. Like they're they're gonna they come. and they haven't even launched international <laughs> with a lot of this stuff. Yeah, man. And what's what's Shang Chi gonna do in some of these markets? What you know, what they have the stream. They just build a. If you can't get to the theater, you can see it on the streaming service sometime in the future. Like you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, this monster growth is what yeah, they Yeah, yeah. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below about who you think will be this aerospace engineer. Um, are you, are, do you guys have a, 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 a villain in mind, whether it be Mephisto or Nightmare? It can only be one of those two, in my opinion. Uh, let us know in the comment section below. Uh, Marvel's killing it, man. Marvel's killing it. Um, Gina Carano has been let go of from Lucasfilm and Disney, uh, based on some, based on her social media posts. Uh, if you watch the John Campier show, and I recommend Brian, I don't know if you've watched it. Uh, I've seen a few, yeah. so you saw that when he was breaking down the timeline. Yeah. It was not an isolated thing. Yes. And there were. Well, the, the thing that I found funny about it is that he, he said that he would probably give her another chance. It's like, dude, you're giving her three chances and she promised you she wouldn't do it again. <laughs> and she did it again. Hey, this was obviously a very different situation than the James Gunn situation. The first one was something that, you know, with James Gunn, it was a, a knee-jerk reaction. They had to do something. This one, they wanted to keep... The, the thing, you know, they wanted to keep the Mandalorian going. They had something good going. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, Disney didn't feel comfortable with how things were going outside of that. And, you know, when you work for a company, you represent them. And obviously they felt that that relationship could not continue. Will it hurt the Mandalorian? I don't think so. In the short term, Maybe, probably, the, I don't know. I don't think so. Because The Mandalorian is a fantastic show without her. She was a great character, but there are so many other characters that can be introduced to this show that you'll forget about that quite soon. Even if they probably, who knows if they recast her, I don't know. But well, they will. They, 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 they're going to recast her. Yeah, I think 100%. I don't care what yeah. they say today. Because I mean, my, my comment at all on the whole Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, you know, let me say, look, let's just look at it from the standpoint of the show, which yeah. is a couple of factors. So, one is, like I said, she embodies the character very well, but it's not a character that can't be replaced, right? We, yeah. We've seen in cinema or shows, like, there are certain characters that are hard to replace um you know it's like if you like if we were to draw a comparison like you know instead of his untimely passing let's say this had happened to heath ledger in the middle of dark knight filming 
whole different story. Yeah, right? yeah. You could replace the, you know, I mean, you know, you could, I don't know who, I am interested to see who they put in this role, but I think there's a number of actresses who could do it. Yeah. You know, I think, although it's weird, the, the, the people wanting Lucy Lawless to do this, I'm like, you kind of, a little late yeah, she's a little, yeah, 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 her, yeah, her, her yeah, heyday yeah, at Zeno yeah. was like 20 years ago I don't yeah know. yeah yeah um even like i don't know like if they got like michelle rodriguez to do it she clearly is not the girl enough to do it and it has yeah. the acting to do it as physical just as an example like yeah it would take you one episode to be like oh car doing looks a little different yeah like, you'd be cool with it now i think the one thing that disney was a little more interesting is they clearly were going to build a show around around her. Yes, yes. And so that's the more interesting angle here. Is does that short circuit the sort of Rangers of the New Republic or just change the whatever they were going to do with that? Because it was the piece of Investor Day that like made no sense. They like they were like giving you all these details and promoting it, and they kind of like left that hanging out there. And now we kind of find out why, which is they were sort of I guess not sold on her already, and then. This yeah. stuff happened so yeah it, it, it may have some impact there but no i don't fully expect by the time season three shoots which i hear is in the spring um there'll be someone else in the role and by the way this show is such a global phenomenon now that the yeah. list of people who will want to take that part is going to be way higher than it was yeah two, three years ago. so sorry to see her go from just sort of a character standpoint but yeah not, not in you know not a devastating blow to the show I agree with you 100% on that. Let us know what you think about um, a recast of that character. And uh, will people accept that recast? I, again, I think initially people are going to voice their opinions, but after a while, people will forget and move on. Because again, at the, at the end of the day, it's all about the Mandalorian, the show and the story and the characters in that show that are going to actually get people to watch. Um, now final discussion. Um, I wanted to talk about Shang Chi. Now, how do you pronounce the, um, the lead character's name? Simu Lu is how I think it's pronounced. Yeah, yeah, oh, he, Jesus, I'm wrong. yeah, he had uh posted something, I believe it was on Instagram. Yeah, he posted something as his Kim's convenience character. Ah like kind of commiserating with fans that there hasn't been any footage yet. Yes. Yeah. And that's what a lot of people have been wondering about. Like, yo, what the hell? Nothing? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing? We've seen footage of Black Widow and, and you know, it's like, what, what, what are we waiting for? And he said, it'll be worth the wait. Now, let's talk about this for a little bit. Shang Chi came out of nowhere for many people. And looking back, I understand where it came from. This was birthed after Black Panther and realizing what this could mean for different characters of ethnicity being the lead. And I, ha I have to say that when this was announced, I was very, 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 very excited for this character to be introduced. Come on, Master of Kung Fu. We want to see what that's going to look like. And I've seen the lead character in, in Kim's Convenience. He's a very likable guy. He looks athletic. And he's done, if you, if you follow him on Instagram, he's done quite a few things to let you see that he's very capable of portraying uh, Shang-Chi and the Master of Kung Fu. This is a very important film. The reason why I say that is because we really haven't gotten a martial arts film to go. I mean, I, I think about martial artists and who have impacted me as a, 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 as a viewer of of that genre, Bruce Lee, Jackie Chan, Jet Li. Um, what's the guy from oh, It Man? Chuck Norris, I gotta throw Van Damme in there. Maybe. Yeah, you could, Van Damme. There's been quite a few, but as of late, not many. 
You could certainly the guy from It Man. What's his name? It Man. Well, Donnie Yen. Donnie Yen, yes. But we haven't seen a film that encompasses this mark, this this tournament style that has been great, like absolutely fantastic. The only ones that comes to mind are Bloodsport, believe it or not, um, Enter the Dragon, and for me, that's pretty much it. For all of you who probably say Mortal Kombat and no, 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 uh, no, the, no. Honorable, the honorable mention is probably Man of Tai Chi. Uh, okay. Kennedy directed film. It stars one of the guys who was a one of the henchmen in the Matrix uh, Reloaded mm-hmm. style, and it's quite. It's actually decent. That's not a bad. Like if you need to pick it up on streaming, like it's not bad. But okay, it's not legendary either. It doesn't. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. And on what we're talking about, it's genre defined. Yeah. Yes. And also, we haven't seen um, a character or martial art character in the movies that's been outside of Bruce Lee for me. You, obviously, you have your honorable mentions like Jackie Chan and Jet Li and, and, and perhaps some others, but nobody like Bruce Lee. And I think Marvel is aiming to show us that that level of excitement, that le- level of, of martial arts that's been diff- that's going to be different from anything that we've ever seen before. And I'm curious to see how this is going to turn out. Because, hey, if you, if you, if anybody who knows who Shang-Chi, he is the master of Kung Fu. That says a lot. So, and we've seen a lot of Kung Fu in this, in, in, in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, right? So he has to be as, um, what's the guy's name? Mr. Han, extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm hoping to see that. Um, like you said in the past, this has been Marvel's best kept secret. Um, how excited are you for this film? Well, let, let's let's stay on the martial arts thing for a second. Okay. And we'll the movie thing, because we, you and I have talked about this, but we haven't really talked about it in the public forum on the pod. So every name you just mentioned is significant in that they were a martial artist first who Correct. learned acting. Correct. Now you have an actor who is learning martial arts. So right there, there's a little bit of a challenge or a difference, right? So. Yes. We agree, you know, Simu Lu looks like an athletic guy. We see, but it is a difference, right? Yes, Everyone yes, else yes, that you yes, mentioned, yes. like they're martial they, artists. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, they show up at a tournament. They could win, legit. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I think the the other piece of this is if you're going to do a tournament, in some ways, your fight is only as good as the guy or girl that you're fighting. Yes. And so, you know, part of what made some of the great martial arts films work is it's Bruce Lee and Chuck Norris. If you're gonna choreograph a fight with those two guys, what you can pull off visually is a lot different than, than you know, throwing two random actors, right? So, so there's an element of that too, which is, we don't know it. We know a lot about the, the, you know, the Mandarin or you know, the, the main characters. We don't really know who's populating this tournament. I'm very right. curious to see if there's actually going to be accomplished martial artists who are in this film, because if it does, that could really elevate the quality. Like, I think in a very small way, you know, it, it's a small thing, because you mentioned the MCU, where hand-to-hand combat has been such a big part of the, the franchise, and I agree with you. But, you know, one of the fights that just has a real authenticity to it, it's a small moment, is when Pat fights George St. Pierre. Yes. Yeah, so George St. Pierre is a fighter. Like yeah. he, so what he's able to do naturally without a stuntman in, in that hand to hand, and he, he can make Chris Evans look good, quite yeah. honestly. And that's yeah. part of it. And so I think that's going to be interesting to see is, you know, whether they use different styles, whether they use people who are locally famous. Um, uh, the other honorable mention, I guess we didn't talk about Ang Bak, even though it's yeah, not. Yeah, yeah, I said, yeah. I said it earlier. Yeah, yeah. That was the other one. Yeah, that's kind of old. Um, yeah. Because I feel like movies like the other movie that had probably great martial arts that wasn't really a tournament movie was The Raid. That's probably the other one that there's individual scenes in that which are incredible, but it's not a 
it's not a tournament fight movie, but um, so yeah, I, I'm actually fascinated because I do think it's a you are signing up for a challenge when you choose. They didn't have to choose the tournament style; they chose it. Yeah, I'm assuming they chose it for a reason, yeah. and that you know that elevates expectations. Um, Definitely. And I kind of feel like you'll know in the trailer, right? Clearly he's seen the trailer or the movie because he's telling you it's worth the wait. And it was supposed to be out this month originally. So movie's done. So yes. I figure we're going to know at some point in the trailer what we're, what we're in for. Yeah. Um, I also got to say uh, Michael Jai White in, 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 is, is another fantastic martial artist and, and Bones, I believe, is a, or what's, what's the name of that movie? Blood Bones or Bones? I forget. But that was a dope film that he did because um, he he's a he's also a martial artist that turned actor. Um, you're right; they chose this tournament style for a reason. My expectations are extremely high. They are extremely high because of Mar what Marvel has done. They keep impressing us. And to do something like this, where we've seen other movies where they have this tournament style sort of thing, and they're oh, they're enjoyable. Some may are enjoyable and some aren't. But they've never been, again, extraordinary. They've never been that. You know, except for you know, Enter the Dragon, um, and, and and Bruce Lee flicks in general, they've always been spectacular to me. So again, the expectations are high, and I am looking forward to seeing how they visually pull this off. The fight sequences for me, again, when you say Master Kung Fu, you got to bring it. And if it doesn't look um, like something we've never seen before, then I'll probably be a little bit disappointed. I think you hit on the key, which is there's both the, the quality of the, the physical prowess of the people doing it, and then there's the mastery of the director shooting it. And so this is a film that you know, really offers a chance to see some of both, right? We, the original Matrix was groundbreaking, not because Keanu Reeves was an amazing martial artist, just because of the, how those scenes were put together and shot. Like yes, that's yes. what made that legendary yes. in terms of the minds of people. Yes. We think about some of the great sort of Asian martial arts films, like House of Flying Daggers, like some of the most famous, it's the way, it's a style. It's the yeah, style yeah. and the grand theme and sort of the superhuman way they sort of float in sort of this balletic way they fight. That's as important to it as what the actor can do. I mean, Jet Li's done a ton of those. It's part of what made his name. He actually happens to be a great martial artist without a wire attached yeah, to him. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. You know, part of what made it fun visually was the wire work. And yeah. so I'm very curious to see, like, do we see something revolutionary in terms of how these are filmed? Like, are you going to see a, a martial art, a master of martial arts fight sequence from an angle or sort of with an effect that you just haven't experienced before? And if we get that, I think we're, you know, we're golden for something, you know, unprecedented. I, I'm very excited for this film. I, it's, at, um, it's at the level of uh, the Batman. That's the level of excitement that I'm at with Shang-Chi. In terms and of I, if, if, we were doing, if we were doing a futures draft, I think the Batman and this are 1-1-A one, one for yeah. what we know is in the pipeline. I think you're taking one and I'm taking the other as our number one picks. Yeah. 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 Uh, ladies, ladies and gentlemen, that's our show. Let, tell us what you uh, think about Shang-Chi. Are you excited for it? Are you excited to see how this is going to play out in terms of the tournament style? Are we going to probably see Iron Fist make an appearance? Are we going to see... Ben Jones was in the news this week saying that he told... Haley Steinfeld to do the Hawkeye show. He's taking credit for that. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, was that yeah. like a 
Oh, I'm over here, guys. Yeah. I'm still here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that that shit for sale. Uh, but it's it's funny that he, you know, listen, Iron Fist, um, and not to get on the Iron Fist uh, discussion, but we, you and I can both agree that what we were expecting, they didn't deliver at all with, uh, um, in terms of martial arts with when it came to Iron Fist. Um, and we no, wish much, that would have been the better. martial arts and Daredevil were better. Oh, way better. Way better. Way better. Um, so let us know what you think. Are you excited for Shang-Chi? Let us know in the comment section below. Uh, let us know if you want these to go premier access because I am in the camp that Disney is opening the door for this. I think that Bob Chapek's quotes about Black Widow, um, about Raya, and about Mulan indicate they are building a body of evidence about consumer behavior that's making them more willing to put more stuff on premier access. And I think it is, I think silence speaks volumes. There was no Black Widow ad in the Super Bowl. The only thing they advertised was stuff they knew when it was coming out. Falcon and Winter Soldier, yeah. Riot League. There's been nothing about Shang-Chi, but Simu Liu's telling you it's done. To me, these are signs that Disney wants to promote this once. Which is when they know exactly what they're going to do. They're going to do with it, yeah. And I think we're up against the red line for that. And I don't know, it felt to me like on the, on the earnings call, he was opening the door for these to go premier access or at least be moved around in a hybrid model or something different than originally planned. So stay tuned. Uh, be curious to what the people who listen to this, people are the friends, like what they, what you want to see. Would you rather see them push it back another six, nine months or would you Hell rather them pull the trigger and, and get some stuff out? Get it out. I'll pay for it. I'm, there's people going to, yo, are you going to tell me? There's a hundred million people that are going to pay for it pretty much. Thanks. Are you kidding me? You know, yeah, granted, you're going to probably get those people who pay $30 and you got like five people at the crib. But if these movies are as great as we think they, they could be, those people are going to pay again. For, for some reason, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that Black Widow uh, gets put out on streaming and we have to pay for it. And I'm hoping that, that that is the case. It seems, based on what I've seen, that... In, on Instagram and people posting stuff that does that they are not budging from the the theater release. Um, and based on what you're saying, it's not how I read his comment. Yeah, not how I read his answer. That answer, yeah. that answer to me said, "Yeah, that's the base plan. That's our preferred plan." But he, clearly qualified it by saying we're basically ready to pivot at a moment's notice to a new strategy. I think, I think the percentages are right. Like whatever you thought they were three months ago, if it was yeah. a 10% chance or 15% chance, I would guess we're now at like 30 to 35% chance it's going premier access. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 uh, I agree with you, man, because they can't afford to delay this any longer. Um, I don't know if they're banking with um, foreign box office. Uh, I don't know what they're thinking, but the clear choice to me would be to release it on Premier Access and get people to pay 30 bucks for it or 40 bucks. I don't care. I'm going to pay. I'm going to watch this because I've been waiting for Black Widow because I think Black Widow is going to be on par with um, um, Captain America Winter Soldier. Oh, Okay, I'm I, not over there. Wow, I'm I'm, I'm 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 there. I'm there. I'm there. I think it's going to be on par with that film. Um, and Shang Chi, Shang Chi speaks for itself, man. Yeah. So, let's see, man. Let's see. Um, WandaVision Friday. Hopefully, wow. we yeah. Hopefully, probably one hour. They're saying like forty minutes because the 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 credits, the credits is like. Room. The, the global credits in every language. Sheesh. So we're definitely going to get a lot longer WandaVision episodes going forward. we got three more left to go. Hopefully in the next one, we get a little bit closer to who some of these people that they've been teasing. 
um, shows up. And uh, yeah, we're very excited, man. MCU is doing their thing. Um, and then we got a few more weeks till the four hour spectacle. So, you, by the way, you do realize that the Snyder Cut comes out the night before Falcon and Winter yes. Soldier. Yes. One night, okay? Yes. So, sleep, sleep, get your sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I would say something after the show. Um, but yeah, I, I, I saw, I realized that today and it's like, listen, four hours is a long time. I'm going to try to watch it. I'm going to watch it. Four hours. But I'm looking forward to seeing Falcon and the Winter Soldier more than I next am. Next week, Godzilla versus Kong in episode It's going to be crazy. Uh, or episode three of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. <laughs> I don't know what it's, it's gonna be crazy. It's, it's gonna be crazy. This is what this is exciting. 2021 is gonna be an exciting year for content, man. We've been saying this for quite some time. Um, thank you once again for joining us on the Nerd Gen Report. I hope you guys enjoyed. Please share it with your friends. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Um, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gen Report. Brian, any last words? No, I think we covered it. That was great. All right, man. I'll see you next week. It's good.